Why has it got to rain? Seriously. I'm going to go out shooting. Hey folks, it's Mike. Um, yeah, I had planned to bring you a different video from an actual location. Uh, sadly, due to some technical boo-boos on my part, um, yeah, uh, it, it, no. I'm gonna have to redo it. Now, oh, well, it happens. Uh, so, uh, at this point, uh, yes, this may be a bit of a filler episode, but it's still my episode, and you're gonna have to watch it. You have no choice. So, uh, at this point, what I'm going to, uh, to do is just, uh, just tell you about uh, some of the things that I have photographed uh, this month so far. It's, uh, you know, getting into later April, but uh, I've done a few things and uh, had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, so, yeah, let's go, uh, let's go take a look. First up, it's uh, the Don's Photo Camera Hangout, which uh, takes place at the first Tuesday of uh, every month. So if you're in the Winnipeg area, you're welcome to, uh, to check it out. Um, and if you're not, well, you'll have to drive or fly to Winnipeg in order to take advantage of it. Yeah. Um, so in this particular uh, um, month of April 2024, uh, it took place at uh, Red River College's Exchange District Campus, which is uh, a beautiful campus uh, in uh, several old buildings uh, dating back probably about as far as 1880. Uh, and uh, I decided to go with uh, a vintage lens uh, just to, you know, kind of go, go with the, uh, the vintage uh, vibe of the, uh, the campus itself. So I took my Soligor 35-70 uh, lens um, and um, because it's not a you know, a great lens and a great sharp lens. Um, I had didn't have high expectations of you know getting tack sharp images. You see all the fine detail or whatever, whatever. That wasn't really the goal of it. Um, the goal was just to have fun with uh, a lens that cost thirty five dollars, um, and uh, to go along with that, uh, you know, and I'll show a few photos of it, but uh, from the uh, the event, but. Uh, um, I decided to throw on uh, a vintage uh, look to uh, the photos that I took with the lens, and uh, I think it complemented quite well, um, as you can see with some of the uh, some of these images. Uh, so yeah. Next up was a daytime adventure at uh, Kildonard Park. Uh, my wife and I decided uh, we wanted to try and get some photos of birds. And uh, she's got more practice with taking photos of birds than I do. Um, my shots are typically blurry. And sad to say that on this particular day, um, I, the photos that I did try to take of birds, even geese who were just sitting around, didn't turn out all that well. Um, but I did get some other uh, nice photos as well, which you know I'll show up, uh, maybe put here or there, I don't know, maybe right there, I don't know. Um, so yeah, I mean, like I took my uh, 70 to 200 uh, lens, which great lens, love it. I just need to practice more with it. Um, even if it's just using it for landscape, which I'm perfectly happy with doing. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, finding the right opportunities. So yeah. Oh, and I'll you know, also put some photos up here, um, here, I mean, I suppose I have to kind of go like this, uh, put them here, but yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll show some photos. Actually, on second thought, what I'll do is show them without my face being in the way, because, yeah. Next up was uh, an adventure to uh, Grand Beach. Um, yeah, it's still April, so it's still a lot of snow and ice out uh, out there. Um, it, it it took a lot of uh, trudging around, trudging around in snow just to get to some sand. Um, I didn't create any uh, sand castles because I forgot a bucket and couldn't use my pizza shape floaty because 
there was an open water. Um, some puddles on the ice, but whatever. Uh, anyway, um, went there for, uh, first of all, for sunset photos, which, you know, I'll show here. Uh, forget it. I'll just, just replace my face with it. Um, and uh, then uh, afterwards, uh, just as it was getting uh, dark, you know, still in blue hour, um, did some steel wool spinning, uh, where it, steel wool spinning, if you're not familiar, is uh, where you take uh, uh, a bit of uh, steel wool, uh, put it inside something like a, uh, a whisk uh, on the end of a, a leash or rope or whatever, light the steel wool on fire and uh, just spin it around and you get some pretty neat effects when you're uh, doing uh, long exposure uh, photography. And uh, again, I'll show you some of the photos from that night, which I think turned out quite well. And uh, after a while, uh, you know, we finished off with the uh, the steel wool uh, spinning and uh, also did some sort of um, painting with light as well, which, you know, I think turned out quite well. Um, I turned uh, my focus to uh, to the stars because I kind of wanted to to do take some more photos of this, the stars, and uh, in particular uh, on this night I found uh, Orion and thought, hey, let's 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 take some photos of the stars. So I did, uh, and uh, in one particular um, wasn't really one photo because it was a stack of. Several photos, um, including one of me playing around with uh, with a light. In fact, ugh, this light in particular, um, sort of tried to use it as a, uh, a lightsaber, and you know, give it a nice, uh, nice little effect. And uh, again, I, I, I'm very happy with the results of uh, of those photos. And uh, so, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll show them. Yeah here, there, everywhere, something like that. And uh, finally was uh, an adventure to, you know what, that's going to be a surprise because uh, it's where the technical boo-boo took place and uh, I'm, I plan on uh, redoing that, uh, all of that and uh, we'll show up hopefully in the next video. So stay tuned. Suppose I could show you some of the editing that I've done with uh, with these photos. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, yeah, with uh, the adventure at uh, Kildonan Park, I took, I don't know, probably 60, 70 photos. And out of that, only 15 turned out, really. Um, in, and uh, in terms of uh, bird photos, this is the closest I got to an actual good image of a bird. Uh, it helps that it was a goose who was just sort of standing around. And, uh, yeah. Let's just move on to another photo from that day. Um, oh, hey, hadn't actually even noticed. Um, but uh, there is actually a goose in this photo, so when? Um, so essentially, uh, what I did with this photo is just give it a pretty basic edit. Um, didn't do a lot in terms of uh, editing. Just uh, you know, played around with the uh, color temperature a little bit, add a little texture, um, add a little detail for a little sharpness in some areas. Uh, threw on a vignette and uh, ooh, mask. What mask did I put on this? Uh, oh, right, little mask just to. Uh, give a little more, um, you know, highlight to uh, the middle of the scene with the uh, the goose. So yeah, that's about all I can say about uh, Kildona Park Adventures. I need to practice a little more with my 7200 lens. Uh, so yeah.
And uh, with the uh, some of the photos from uh, Grand Beach, um, which I think was about a week and a half ago, maybe even closer to two weeks by now, um, started out with sunset photos. Uh, wanted to go to a different part of uh, the the lake um, in Grand Beach. Um, just turns out that was a little too treacherous, so uh, went to uh, the West Beach uh, with uh, the wonderful uh, boardwalk. And, uh, you know, as I trudged down the snow to the sand and uh, the lake itself is still, well, was still mostly frozen. There's some puddles of water, as you can see in uh, this particular photo. Um, uh, in terms of uh, edits to this photo, didn't do a lot, um, you know, just raised uh, the exposure a tiny bit, played with some, some colors a bit, uh, like especially in the sky here and, and the reflection, um, just because the, uh, the original photo had, uh, didn't have a lot of color to it. Um, so I figured, why not play around with it? So I did. And, uh, you know, as I said, this reflection uh, with the sky uh, in, the, uh, in the, the water, the melted water, uh, I, I kind of like how it looked. It, uh, it turned out well. And uh, while we were at Grand Beach, uh, we were there with a, a few friends as well. Um, we did uh, a little bit of uh, steel wool spinning, um, as I described earlier. And uh, we also got to a point where we were experimenting with uh, a couple of lights being spun along with the, uh, the steel wool, uh, which, you know, I mean, uh, turned out fabulous, especially you look at a photo like this where you've got all of the, uh, the sparks here sort of, you know, Go tailing away, and uh, you know, even uh, with the the light from the uh, the lit steel wool, it gives you a little bit of uh, color on the ground as well. And uh, again, it's uh, a photo I'm really happy with. Uh, you know, and uh, other photos like uh, this one, and uh, where's some other ones? This one. Um, yeah, I mean, steel wool spinning's always a neat thing to to, uh, to photograph. Um, but in terms of editing, again, not a lot done. I mean, yeah, I raised the exposure a little bit just to make sure that uh, everything sort of, uh, um, you know, you could see, you know, more than just darkness, essentially. Um, played around the colors just a slight amount, but barely. Uh, so, yeah, that's, uh, you know, uh, something to try. And uh, finally, uh, from Grand Beach, uh, there's this, uh, this photo with uh, this strange looking guy in the foreground here. Oh yeah, it's me. Um, anyway, uh, one of the things I wanted to, uh, to do was because I had uh, you know, some, some neat LED lights to play with, I kind of wanted to give a bit of a you know, Star Wars Jedi sort of um, scene to one of these, these photos. Um, so I essentially, uh, had, uh, my wife take a photo of me, um, uh, waving around a, an LED light, like a lightsaber. Uh, thankfully I was smart enough not to, you know, lose grip of it and, you know, destroy it. Um, so like, uh, like with this particular uh, photo, uh, again, it was a stack of about, I think four or five photos of the stars itself. And then one of the foreground uh, with with you know me your your personal Jedi, um, and uh, as I say I uh, with with the star photos I combine those in sequitur first just to reduce any uh, any noise, and uh, then do some sort of basic adjustments uh, just to you know bring out the sky a little bit more and uh, you know as you can see uh, you know with a, a long enough exposure it uh, gets you some nice uh, nice looking stars there. Um, on this particular occasion, it was 13 seconds, uh, at ISO 3200 and, uh, open it all the way up on my 24 to 105 lens, which is F4. 
um, and then uh, threw it into uh, to Photoshop where, uh, as you can see here, um, I've got uh, the uh, you know the photo of this the the stars the the stacked uh, photo of the stars, and then uh, threw in the uh, the photo of myself where I essentially just uh, put on a, a mask in uh, Photoshop, and uh, painted myself into the the final photo, and uh, pretty happy with the results. It's uh, I, I really like it. And uh, with the photos from uh, Red River College's Exchange Campus, uh, Exchange District Campus, um, you know, as I say, I, I was playing with a vintage lens, so I figured, you know what, let's give it a vintage vibe to the uh, the photos itself. So um, I threw on a preset that I'd created uh, to give it sort of a 1970s film look, uh, and which I mean is well it's certainly a little more extreme than the the previous photos from you know Grand Beach and Kildona Park and whatever um, so I mean like I, as you can see with the, my settings here I've sort of dropped the exposure just a tiny bit up the contrast a little bit and blacks uh, just because I didn't want any pure blacks in the photo um, at worst dark grays um, you know uh, decrease the texture and the clarity Add a bit of haze or negative dehaze, as some people like to, to say. Don't know why, but whatever. Um, added some vibrance, uh, played around with some uh, some colors, um, and uh, you know, Bob Junkle. So you know, and I'm I'm very happy with how these ones really turned out because I mean, you've got this one which has a nice yellow uh, color palette to it. Uh, I've got this other one where. Um, it, I mean, it really looks like you you took this photo back in the 1970s with uh, you know camera from the uh, the era. Um, you've got this one of uh, a back alley, um, you know, and uh, again, uh, just a matter of sort of playing with uh, the colors, playing with uh, um, you know some of the the exposure, um, and uh, just generally giving it that uh, that 70s vibe. And I think, I think they turned out quite well. Uh, so yeah, I'm pretty proud of it. Although I will say with some of the the photos that I took at uh, Red River College's Exchange District Campus, that's a mouthful to say. Um, I was playing around with uh, shapes in uh, in the new building that they've got there. Um, pardon me if I don't remember the name of it. I'll probably put it you know somewhere down here somewhere. Um, so my apologies. Uh, but uh, so with with some of the uh, the textures and, and shapes in the uh, the new building. Kind of also wanted to give it a bit of a futuristic neo, you know, sort of uh, sort of look to it. Um, so I, you know, applied uh, a sort of futuristic uh, preset that I created uh, a while ago and kind of happy with. Um, so yeah, I think they uh, these these photos also turned out uh, quite well as well. Again, mouthful to say. I forgot the big event of uh, the year, the uh, solar eclipse. Yeah, um, this was an interesting day for me as well. Um, it, um, it, it was a pretty cloudy couple of days right around the, uh, the event. Uh, we weren't here in Winnipeg, we weren't expecting a full uh, eclipse. I think it was only 62% totality, which is, still isn't bad. Um, yeah, it, the problem is that uh, it was a work day, 
Um, I, because of the, the forecast being cloudy, I figured I had no chance of actually getting any photos. Uh, and then the sky sort of kind of cleared up for a little bit and got a little cloudy, but not too cloudy. So I decided to uh, get a coworker to drive me home so I could pick up my camera gear. And uh, I intended to take a couple of ND filters, stack them on top of each other, because with photographing the sun, you don't really want to expose your camera sensor because it'll, it'll get burnt. Uh, and so uh, I forgot one of those ND filters and ended up taking one. So I was kind of trying to be careful that day. Um, and uh, right around uh, two o'clock, I was out and about uh, trying to take some photos. Um, and some of them kind of turned out, uh, others uh, kind of not. Uh, I sort of had to play around with settings a little bit because I'd, I'd never actually photographed an eclipse before. Um, so I found that uh, I had to sort of shut down the uh, aperture a little bit. Um, what was I using anyway? Um, what's a good example here? Give me a sec. It uh, looks like, uh, with this photo in particular, I shot it at uh, f14 um, and still actually had to, um, you know, make sure that, you know, I didn't uh, spend a lot of time, you know, with the camera pointed towards the sun. It was basically a click, click. It was pretty quick. Um, this one's not a bad photo. Um, and, and shows you how cloudy it actually was that day. I think a better example of that day would be something like this. Um, again, shot at f14, um, and kind of wanted to get uh, this uh, this light pole uh, as part of the shot, just to give it some interest, um, and not just sort of take uh, the the standard hey, let's take a photo of the sun itself. Um, and uh, with the ND filter being, you know. A dark filter. It, it gave it kind of a neat, dark, moody uh, sort of effect. And uh, in terms of playing around with settings, I, you know, as you can see, I've I essentially increased the shutter um, or the exposure by about a half of uh, a stop. Um, you know, up the shadows a little bit. Uh, you know, up the details as I usually like to do. And uh, that was kind of about it for that. Um, you know, I mean, if if I could have spent more than just, you know, 15 minutes, uh, you know, outside taking photos because uh, I had to go back to work, um, I would have. So, yeah. And uh, on that note, I'll, uh, I'll just end this video and uh, I will uh, see you next time. And uh, so I'll say do the usual like, comment, subscribe and uh, ciao folks.